Meantime, as we count down towards the budget, in fact, no one counts down towards the budget, just the political class count down towards the budget, but we all know that whatever spin happens on the Tuesday night, we're able to bang some holes in it like Swiss cheese by 9pm. And by the way, a little shout out, we're going to be on budget night, special edition, 90 minutes, starting at 9.30 on budget night. So you'll hear everyone else and then you'll hear us rip and roar. And then over a week to two weeks, they'll be dragged kicking and streaming to eventually see what we can see at 9.30, which is the problem not the spin. That's just the nature of a budget lockup. Well, again, we have as part of this the lie constantly being told by the Treasurer that the main focus is all about the cost of living and battling the cost of living and all that other garbage they've said how many times. In fact, this is the latest spin that's coming out via Labor MPs. We have to support people who are doing it really tough with the higher cost of living, but also not fan the flames of inflation which would put interest rates up. I think the Treasurer has done a fantastic job of delivering targeted relief to families uh, in ways that don't put upward pressure on inflation. Oh, and aren't they doing so much, aren't they? They took $1,500 off your last year, 10 million workers, $1,500 worse off, not to mention how much you've had to pay in extra interest rates, the best of which will be a perhaps quarter of a reduction by 2026. And then, of course, there's the too little, too late tax cuts. Oh, jeez, what a... Thank you. Thank you, government. Thank you for giving me back $15.46. Oh, thank you. Where would we be without you? In exactly the same place we are right now, which is hurting. Another example of the people who supposedly they're focused on, but they ain't helping at all. The unemployment rate is 3.9%, but the underemployment rate, i.e. people who technically have a job but are not doing the hours they need to be able to pay their bills, and let alone the people who, again, as I say, are legitimately looking for work. Well, believe it or not, I agree with the sentiment, and I think most people will, and just like a broken clock, it can be right twice a day, but uh, Greg Jericho, writing in The Guardian, says that the budget reveals what governments actually care about. And who could argue that the decision of the Labor Party to keep the job seeker payment where it is is keeping people who are looking for work in a level of poverty. Don't believe me? Have a look at these stats, which again were produced through the Australian Bureau of Statistics and have been interpreted by Greg. And it's just $386 per week if you are trying to look for a job. Would like paying for a house, family and all the rest of it. Now, while I'm not suggesting that these people uh, should be getting anywhere near $1,000, $2,000 a week. Have a look at this. When you actually compare the unemployed benefits to the age pension, while the age pension has quite rightly and correctly been significantly increased over the years, the unemployment benefits basically stay in the same place. The assumption being there's no votes in people who are looking for work, but when cost of living is as bad as it currently is, to see that huge financial disparity in two groups of Australians who do struggle to make ends meet, who could possibly argue $386 a week is appropriate? Now, whether you lift that range for the first six months of unemployment and then it starts to fall down the longer you remain unemployed, maybe we can have that conversation. I'm doing the most dangerous thing, which is just wondering out loud. But this one might drive it home for you. The blue line is the poverty level in Australia. The unemployment benefits are way below it. And the interpretation that Greg Jericho has put via these graphs in The Guardian today is that even if you increased to 90% of the current age pension, you would still be way below the poverty line. So forgive me if I don't believe the government when they say that they are there for those that are doing it toughest. Because even the age pension isn't good enough, the carer's pension isn't good enough, let alone the people that are trying to look for work because they lost work for no fault of their own, or as we've talked about a million times on this program, the true ism that means many people suffer on the unemployment queues or they even just give up on looking for work is because of how old they are. This society does not value people of a certain age. We know it about how they are treated in aged care, we know it, when it comes to big organisations, and we know it when it comes to much of the political debate. It's all about the children are our future, and they are. But what about the people who had them, who feed them, who take care of them, who parent them, who grandparent them, who care for them, who love them, who seek to hand on family traditions? 
that's how you judge a country. So you can stick it where the sun doesn't shine that these people are looking out when the reality is tax cut for everyone. Oh, there's a $40 million to sell you on a tax cut you don't have to approve, you don't have to apply for. That's just government advertising for the Labor Party. The people who are in charities, they got just $15 million extra to deal with many of the problems that are currently going on, including by people who are on the unemployment lines, currently trying to look for food. So, again, I do not believe they could care less about the cost of living. But, as always, cost of living, main focus, endless focus, laser-like focus for us because it matters. So many of our fellow Australians hurt and they hurt all day, every day, so we're going to keep talking about it. And the far left-wing Australian Bureau of Statistics put out some numbers today, again interpreted by the Sydney Morning Herald, as people who are paying off home are feeling the inflation levels double that of the official levels. Geez, who's been telling you that for months? Who's been showing you that the headline number looks OK, but then when you actually look at food and transport and housing and insurance, that every single month it's been almost double? Well, we double down on that point. The Bureau of Statistics, this is what you need to see. Every single version of Australian is hurting from people who have a job, who don't have a job, who are age pensioners, people who are getting other forms of welfare, self-funded retirees. And just to show the data, before it's ruled misinformation, by the thought police, have a look at people who currently are just employees. That's the extreme majority of Australians, the ones paying taxes we go. Their insurance has gone up in the past 12 months by 28%. Housing, up 7%. Food and beverages, 3.8%. Alcohol and tobacco, 6.2%. Age pensioners, their insurance, despite all of the apparent discounts, still up by almost 20%. What about other welfare recipients? 24% if they're trying to pay off insurance right now. All of these things ripping through families and self-funded retirees, 17.9% on insurance, almost 5% on the place you live, 3% on what you eat, and 3.5% for keeping yourself healthy. All of this is causing trouble in the real world and is being watched by the Reserve Bank. As the pressure exists on the homeowners, mortgagees and people who have even paid off their homes, let alone those that are renting, i.e., everyone, the expectation is that rates will either stay where they are rather than fall, or, God forbid, the Commonwealth Bank is right. Near-term risk is with a rate hike. It, the RBA will not be cutting rates in the near term because they've just had an inflation print that was a little bit stronger than, they, than they'd forecast. You could say the consumer's probably a little bit weaker than they have anticipated, but if they're going to do anything in the next three, four months, they'd be more likely to hike than cut. But does the government give two stuffs? Of course not. They will at an election, but they think what means you will trust them in the next election is, firstly, the Teals will stop the Liberal Party being able to get anywhere near government. And secondly, because they have two budget surpluses and presumably maybe even a third by the time of an election, but I don't know if we'll get that far, the expectation is that the budget surplus, i.e. this, even this government, with a billion here and a billion there, but, geez, there's a lot of money off budget, and I'll get to that in the next few weeks. That is, that is some mud to trudge through, but I'm having a look at it for you to try to tell you the real numbers that we owe. $13 billion is the expectation of this year's surplus. Guess what? They could still have a surplus of $10 billion if they did something that we have been crying for for how long? If they cut petrol tax in half for six months, took it from 49 right back down, to the early 20s, it had cost them $3 billion. They'd still have a surplus, but they choose not to spend it on a reduction in a tax that hurts every single person in the country. Oh, but we really care. We really care about the little people, please. Such garbage.